Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Foundation Revision video. In 61 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam, and today we're going to focus on the topic of substitution. So how to substitute values into expressions and even into formulae as well. So today we're going to be looking at how to approach some typical substitution questions. And also during this video, I'm going to give you a chance to try some yourself. So feel free to pause the video and to give those questions a shot. So let's get started. Hi, today we're going to be looking at substitution. So we're going to be looking at substituting values into expressions. So here's an example. It says, given that w equals 9 and y equals 5, find the value of 8w subtract 3y. So we've got 8w, so that means 8 times w, and w is equal to 9. So we need to work out 8 times 9. And 8 times 9 is equal to 72. So that's equal to 72. And then we've got subtract, and then we've got 3y. And y is equal to 5, so that means 3 times y. And because y is equal to 5, that means 3 times 5. And 3 times 5 is equal to 15. So 3y would be 15. And then we just need to work out 72 take away 15. And 72 take away 15 is equal to 57. So if w is equal to 9 and y is equal to 5, 8w subtract 3y would be equal to 57. Because 8 times w, 8 times 9 is 72. And 3 times y is equal to 15. And 72 take away 15 is equal to 57. And that's it. OK, let's have a look at our next question. Now, this is one for you to try, so feel free to press pause and try this question out yourself. Okay, so the question says, find the value of 12h plus 9t if h is equal to 11 and t is equal to 3. Okay, so we've got 12h, that means 12 times h. Now, h is equal to 11, so we're going to do 12 times 11. And thinking back to our 12 times tables, 12 times 11 is 132. And then we've got plus, and then we've got 9t, that means 9 multiplied by t. And t is equal to 3, so that means 9 times 3. And 9 times 3 is equal to 27. So that means we've got 132 plus 27. And 132 plus 27 will be equal to 159. So that means if h is equal to 11, and t is equal to 3, 12h plus 9t will be equal to 159. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So this time we've been given that w is equal to 10 and y is equal to negative 2. Find the value of 4w plus 3y. So feel free to press pause now and work out the value of 4w plus 3y if w is equal to 10 and y is equal to negative 2. Okay, so we've got 4w. 4w means 4 times w and w is equal to 10. So 4 times 10 is equal to 40. And then we've got plus, and then we've got 3y. Now, y is equal to negative 2, and we're going to multiply that by 3. So 3 times negative 2 would be negative 6. So that means this is going to be equal to negative 6. So we're going to be adding negative 6. So we've got 40 add negative 6. Now, 40 add 6 would be 46, because we're going to go up 6. But if we do 40 plus negative 6, we're going to come down 6. So the answer would be 34. So that means that if w is equal to 10 and y is equal to negative 2, 4w plus 3y would be equal to 34, and that's it. So 4 times 10 is 40, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, 40 add negative 6 would be 34, and that's it. Okay, now sometimes we might be given substitution questions in a bit of a situation. So here we've got, Aaron uses this formula to work out how long it should take to cook a turkey. Now, please be aware I've just made this up, so don't use this if you're cooking a turkey. So we've got the cooking time in minutes is equal to 90 plus the weight of the turkey in kilograms multiplied by 20. So in other words, we get the weight of the turkey in kilograms, we multiply that by 20, and then we do 90 plus that number, or that number plus 90. So the question says, how long should it take to cook a 7 kilogram turkey? So we've got the cooking time is equal to 90 plus the weight of the turkey in kilograms, that's 7, multiplied by 20. So we're going to do 7 times 20, so we're going to take the weight of the turkey and multiply by 20. So 7 times 20 is equal to 140, so we've got 90 plus 140. And then we're going to do 90 plus 140, and 90 plus 140 would be equal to 230. So it would take 230 minutes to cook the turkey. And let's just recap that. Because the turkey weighed 7 kilograms, we're going to do 7 times 20, so 7 times 20 is 140. And then we've got 90 plus 140, and that's equal to 230. And just remember our order of operations, we've got to do the multiplication before we do the additions. That's why we've done the multiplication first. So we do 7 times 20 is 140, plus 90 is equal to 230. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next part. So we've got the same formula. The cooking time in minutes is equal to 90 plus the weight of the turkey multiplied by 20. So no matter what, we always do 90 minutes, and then we take the weight of the turkey, multiply that by 20, and then add that onto the 90. Now this time we're told a turkey takes 150 minutes to cook. How heavy is the turkey? So there's a couple of ways we could do this. One approach is to work backwards, because we know we take the weight of the turkey, multiply by 20, and then add 90. So if we take the 150, we could take away 90, that's equal to 60. And then we could divide that by 20, so 60 divided by 20 is equal to 3. So that means the turkey weighs 3 kilograms. So we could work backwards, so that's one approach. Alternatively, we could make an equation, because we know the cooking time is 150 minutes, so we get 150 is 
equal to 90 plus, and then we've got the weight of the turkey, I'm just gonna call that W, multiplied by 20. Now if we do W times 20, that's 20W, so I'm just gonna write 20W. So that's our equation, we've got the 90 plus 20 times the weight of the turkey is equal to 150. And then if we solve this equation, we wanna get the W on its own, so let's get rid of the 90 to begin with, so we subtract 90 from both sides of the equation, 150, take away 90 is equal to 60. And then on the right hand side, we took away 90 to get rid of this 90, so we're left with 20W. And then we want to find out what w is, so this is 20 times w, so we don't want to multiply by 20 here, so we divide both sides of the equation by 20, so divide by 20 and divide by 20, 60 divided by 20 is equal to 3, and then we divide it by 20 to get rid of the multiply by 20, so we just be left with w, so we've got the weight of the turkey is equal to 3 kilograms, and that's it. So in this question you could work backwards or form an equation and solve it. Okay, now let's have a look at one for you to try yourself. Okay, let's have a look at a question now for you to try, so feel free to press pause and to try this question yourself now. Okay, so the question says, the cost of hiring a hot tub is found by the formula, the hire cost is £50 plus an extra £45 per day. So no matter what, for hiring the hot tub, it's £50, that might be a delivery charge, and then it's £45 per day. So we've been asked to work out the cost of hiring the hot tub for four days. So we know it's £50, and then it's plus £45 per day. So we're going to do 45 multiplied by four, because the hot tub's been hired for four days. So remember our order of operations, we need to multiply first here, so we're going to do 45 multiplied by 4 because it's £45 per day and it's been hired for 4 days. So 4 multiplied by 45 is equal to 180. And then we've got this fixed charge of £50, so we've got 180 plus 50 is equal to £230. So it costs £230 to hire this hot tub for 4 days. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next part. So our next part, we've got the same formula. The higher cost of hiring the hot tub is £50 plus an extra £45 per day. And Alex hires the hot tub for a number of days and the total cost is £500. How many days did Alex hire the hot tub for? So feel free to press pause and work out how many days Alex hired the hot tub for. Okay, so in this question, what we're going to do is we've got two different approaches we could do. We could work backwards or we could form an equation. Let's do both. So in terms of working backwards, well, we know it's £45 per day and then there's an extra £50 charge. So what we're going to do is we're going to work backwards. So let's take the £500 and take away the £50 charge. Okay, so we've taken the total cost of £500 and we've taken away the fixed charge of £50. Now we know the hot tub is £45 per day. So we now can just divide this by 45. So 450 divided by 45 is equal to 10. So that means the hot tub is hired for 10 days. And let's just check that. 10 days at £45 per day is equal to 450, plus 50 is equal to £500. So the hot tub was hired for 10 days. And if you got that, well done. Remember also you could form an equation where we could write down the hire cost, that's well, £500, is equal to the £50 set fee plus £45 per day, so £45 multiplied by the number of days, and I'm going to call that D. Now we just need to solve this equation, so we want to get the D on its own. So we want to get rid of the plus 50, so let's take away 50 and take away 50. So we get that 450 is equal to 45D, 45 multiplied by D, because we took away 50 to get rid of the plus 50. Now this is 45 multiplied by the number of days. We don't want this multiplied by 45 here, so we're going to divide by 45 and divide by 45, and we get that that's equal to 10. So 10 is equal to D, so the number of days is 10. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, so we've looked at substituting values into expressions. We've looked at wordy questions, so questions where there's perhaps a bit of a situation. Now, sometimes with substitution, you might be given questions where you've got positive numbers and negative numbers, or odd numbers and even numbers, and we're going to have a look at a couple of those now. Okay, so let's have a look at this one to begin with. So x is a positive number, and y is a negative number. So x is a positive number, it could be 10 or 57 or something like that. And y is a negative number, so perhaps something like negative 7 or negative 100. And we've been asked to state if the following are positive or negative. So we've got 5x. So that means 5 times x. Now x is a positive number. And if you take a positive number and you multiply by 5, what would you get? Well, you'd get a positive number. So that would be positive. And so 5x would be positive. And you can test that. Let's, for instance, let x equal 10. 5 times 10 would be equal to 50. Or if x was equal to 100, 5 times 100 would be equal to 500 and so on. Okay, next, we've been asked to see whether xy is positive or negative. So remember, xy means x multiplied by y. So x is a positive number, for instance 10, and y is a negative number, and I'm just going to let that be negative 2. So x is 10 multiplied by y, which is negative 2. Well, a positive times a negative is a negative. So for instance, 10 multiplied by negative 2 would be negative 20. So this would always be negative. 
And then finally, we've been asked to state whether y squared is positive or negative. Well, y is a negative number, and we're squaring it, which means you're multiplying it by itself. So for instance, if it was negative 2, negative 2 squared is negative 2. So negative 2 squared would be negative 2 multiplied by negative 2. And a negative times a negative is a positive. So negative 2 times negative 2 would be equal to 4. So negative 2 squared is 4. And if you squared any negative number, you'd end up with a negative multiplied by itself. So a negative times a negative, which is a positive. So y squared would always be positive. And that's it. Okay, now let's have a look at some for you to try yourself. So this time, x is an even number and y is an odd number. Can you state whether the following are odd or even? So we've got 5y, x plus y, and xy. So can you state whether these are odd or even? Okay, so I'm going to let x equal an even number. I'm going to let x equal 8. And y is an odd number. I'm going to let it equal 3. So for instance, 5y, that would be 5 times y, and 5 times 3 would be equal to 15. If y was 7, 5 times 7 is 35. So here, well, no matter what value you're going to choose for y, it's going to be an odd number multiplied by an odd number. 5 times an odd number it would be equal to an odd number. So that would always be equal to an odd number. And if you got that, well done. Okay, x plus y. Well, if we use our examples, our values we chose, 8 and 3, 8 plus 3 is equal to 11. And that's an odd number. And if you choose any even number and plus an odd number, you'll always be left with an odd number. Okay, and finally, x, y, that's an even number multiplied by an odd number. So for instance, 8 times 3 is 24. Or for instance, if you chose 10 times 7, that's equal to 70. No matter what even number and odd number you choose, when you multiply them together, you're always going to get an even answer. So it's going to be an even. And that's it. So 5y would always be odd because 5 times an odd number would always be an odd number. And then we've got x plus y and an even plus an odd is always an odd answer. And then finally xy, an even multiplied by an odd would always be an even. And that's it. And if you got those, well done. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at substitution. So substitution is a very important topic. So in the description below, I've got a link to the practice questions. I highly recommend you have a look at those questions. Substitution is useful for those questions, but they're also useful for questions such as drawing graphs, where you've got perhaps a graph such as y equals 7x plus 1, and you need to substitute in the value for x to get the value for y and so on. Also simultaneous equations, whenever you might need to substitute in one value and get the other value. So substitution is an important topic. I highly recommend you do the practice questions today and keep up the hard work. There's 61 days to go to your GCSE maths exam. You're doing phenomenally well, and I'll see you tomorrow three o'clock on YouTube for the next one for 60 days to go to GCSE Mouse exam. Cheers. Bye.